people from the future welcome from allies nerd today i want to talk about synthetic data and i want to answer questions like what is synthetic data why every company is moving towards synthetic data rather than using real data and how do they actually generate synthetic data well if you are new to my channel then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon i make videos about machine learning and data science regularly so let's get started well, the first thing that I want to answer is what the hell is synthetic data? Well, from the name, we can assume that synthetic data is something that is not real, that is artificially made by us. Well, not actually by us, but some computer program. Okay, so real data is something that we collect from customers that are present in real world, but synthetic data is something that we generate from our computer program okay now the question arises why more and more companies are moving towards synthetic data well there are actually a couple of good reasons behind this the most important at least i feel the most important reason is that the lack of control over data well you might know that petabytes of data are being generated every single day on Facebook alone so obviously there are plenty of data in this planet but the control of this data is in the hand of a few tech giants like Facebook Google Microsoft Amazon etc the smaller companies especially the startups don't have access to this huge amount of data and obviously their subscriber base their customer base is really low that's why they can't collect the data from real world so the synthetic data might be a good way for them to train their prototypes and to make models out of it the second most important reason behind the use of synthetic data is the data privacy well in today's world it has become a very very concerning issue because every time we use some electronic device or the other the chances are we are giving away our data you might think okay uh, some company is taking my data and they might sell to some other company for their profit which may eventually lead to trouble for us well it is actually a possible way but let me tell you even if the company doesn't sell this data to anyone but simply they use your data to build their machine learning model still there is a way that hackers can actually retrieve your personal data the hackers can make structured queries to the model to get the personal data so yeah even if the companies doesn't sell your data just building the model out of your data can reveal your data to public okay the third point i'm gonna mention here is generating edge cases well let me give you a small example Suppose a company is trying to train their model for autonomous driving and I hope you know many companies are doing that for a long time. So what will happen if they want to try their model in a scenario where a person comes in front of the car? Well obviously for safety issues they can't simulate this test on the real world, right? But they somehow have to train their model in that situation so obviously real data is not an option for them so they use computer generated simulations to train their model so i hope by now you can appreciate the need of synthetic data right so now let me tell you some of the ways to generate the synthetic data so let's start with some of the traditional techniques and as we move forward i'm going to introduce some of the more advanced techniques okay so the first technique I'm going to mention here is SMOTE, S-M-O-T-E. Now this is an oversampling technique. This is particularly helpful for classification problems where you have imbalanced data. What the hell is imbalanced data? Well, suppose you are working on a fraud detection problem, okay? So you are given a task to detect fraud transactions. Now obviously you will have two classes first one is genuine transaction and the second one is fraud transactions now obviously the number of examples in the fraud transaction will be much much lower than the number of examples in the genuine transaction so this is an example of imbalanced data set now our machine learning algorithms cannot 
learn well from this imbalanced data so we need to somehow balance this data set the technique here we use is over sampling which simply means making new data points from the limited data points that we have in our minority class so what we do here we take one example in our minority class and we look into its neighborhood and generate a new example now there is a thing called smart percentage if we set the percentage at 100 then we just generate one new instance of the minority class for every instance of the class so that simply means if we had n number of examples in our minority class now we have 2n number of examples and if we set the percentage to 200 then we will have 3n number of examples so that's how it goes on the second method that i'm gonna mention here is addison well it is very similar to the previous one the difference is we are not generating the same number of new examples for every minority class suppose we have five classes in a problem and three of them are minority classes and two of them are majority classes okay out of the three minority classes the machine learning model can learn two classes very easily but it can't learn the third class that well so what we do we generate more examples of the third minority class compared to the previous two minority classes so in a way our algorithm is adapting itself according to the situation it is facing if some minority class is harder to learn it will generate more cases and if it is easier to learn it won't generate that many cases okay now i'm going to mention a very interesting technique to generate synthetic data which is the data augmentation this is particularly helpful for image data sets suppose you are working on a binary image classification problem i'm going to take the famous example of cat versus dog classification so uh, suppose you have really low number of classes for both of them so what we can do here we can generate new images from the images that we have to do it we will transform our images for example we can zoom in we can zoom out we can flip our image vertically and horizontally we can shift the colors a bit we can even shear the image so by applying these transformations we can actually generate new images and then feed our machine learning model so in this way our model will get more number of images and obviously will train better now i'm gonna introduce a new synthetic data generation method which is variational auto encoders well uh, i'm not gonna go very deeper into the mathematics behind it and how it works but here's the gist the task of a variational auto encoder is to encode your input data in a gaussian distribution form so in this process it will lose some of the details of the data but uh, what it can do is it can generate the new image from the gaussian distribution with some slight variations so it's really doing an encoding and decoding job and in this process it is losing some of the information from the input data and it is altering this to make a new data which is not present in the input data that's how we can use this variational auto encoders to generate synthetic data the next method is cut and paste method and it is useful for image data set so the idea is to generate new image data from previously available image data what we do here is in that image we have a background and in the foreground we have an object so the idea is to cut that object from the background by using segmentation masks and place it in a new background with obviously 
some blending applied because if we don't apply some blending it won't actually match so in this way we have generated new data for the object detection this method actually works because our aim is to detect the object not the background so it doesn't matter what the background is and it actually helps our object detection algorithm to ignore the background while detecting one object now here I need to mention one thing is that when we are pasting our object into the new background we are not really paying attention to the geometry so you can say that this is a flaw of this method the next method is synthetic data for text localization in neural images well in this method we are actually overcoming the problem that we had in the previous method in this method we are actually caring about the geometry of the background how let me tell you so this method works in three steps the first step is to detect regions in an image by using some contour detection algorithm after that we pick the regions which are sufficiently large now in the third step we actually create a depth map of this image by using some convolutional neural network to get the idea of the depth in that image after the depth reduction is done we fit a facet in a region by using ransack algorithm and in that facet we actually put our text by the depth information we get to know how we should rotate our text or stretch our text to fit the perspective and the depth and obviously while placing we apply some blending so that it looks natural now the last method I'm gonna tell you is probably the most successful and most amazing method which is called GANs GAN is the abbreviation for generative adversarial network it is a breakthrough in image recognition the idea behind GAN is to have two different models first one is discriminator and the other one is generator so the job of generator is to create new images that closely resembles the real image that is the original input that we have put in our model and the job of discriminator is to tell which one is a original image and which one is a fake image and by this iterative training both of the model become good at their particular jobs and at the end we get two models one of which can generate fake images and other one can identify fake images isn't it amazing well the results are also amazing here so that was some of the most popular synthetic data generation methods that are available right now and obviously there are many more which I didn't cover in this particular video if you want to share some of the other methods then please share them in the comment I will read and reply to them and if you have enjoyed this video please like this video share this video and subscribe to my channel and as always thanks for watching Thank you.